And to mental health now, mental illness is quietly chipping away the lives of many Nigerians unnoticed. There are several types of these health challenges from common disorders that affect tens of millions of people, such as depression and acute anxiety to addiction, total insanity, among others. Now, the recent surge in cases of suicide, which is one of the mental disorders uh, with not less than 10 incidents reported in the media in 2019 alone, and the number of psychiatric patients that now roam the streets across Nigeria, only appears to be a mere tip of the iceberg on the challenges associated with mental health, which the country is yet to come to terms with. Now, joining us in the studio to discuss this is a lawyer, a lawyer and mental health advocate, Ladi Ulubemi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too. And thanks for coming. Thank you for having me on board. And uh, now we're talking about mental health. I know you are an expert in this field. I know this is your area. So let's begin with the first initial question. Mm. What is what mental health and mental well-being in itself? Mental health, mental well-being is actually the same. I'm going to refer to the definition of um, mental well-being by the World Health Organization that says that it is a state where a person is able to realize their full potential and where they're able to cope with the normal life stressors of life. Mm -hmm. That, in a nutshell, is the definition of what mental well-being is. Interestingly, I, um, was, um, I had a short training yesterday, um, some security personnel, and I actually asked all of them, how many of you can say that you are 100% within this range of definition of mental well-being as defined by the WHO? How many of us are realizing our full potentials? How many of us are able to cope with the various life stressors that happens to us? Mm -hmm. And virtually all of them there said no. So the alternative is if you're not experiencing good mental well-being, it means that you're experiencing poor mental well-being. Mm. So yes, there is a scourge, um, if I can use that word, around the fact that a lot of us do not even know the state of our mental well-being. Mm -hmm. And so some people are really losing it. And like you rightly introduced, um, there's quite a lot going on because there's quite a lot going on in the society, in the community, financially. So much pressure to do with. So much pressure. And I just sometimes wonder what happened when we were growing up. And I might say we, I'm over 50. No, really, don't look at all. <laughs> and when we were growing up, there were pressures. But how different is the pressure that we had then and the pressure that we have now? That is a big debate that has to go on mm -hmm. in our various homes, in our various workplaces, in our various communities. What's the difference between the pressure that happened in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s and 90s, and the pressure that we have now? Why are people buckling? very easily. Mm -hmm. Now that brings me to my next question. But before I say that, I remembered sometime last week, someone called me and said, how are you and how's your mental health? And I started laughing, <laughs> you know. So um, what, what I'm saying this is, is it okay? How do we now begin to check on one another? And what are the indicators that, you know what, one's mental health may just, it may just be on the baseline or it's high time to check it? Absolutely. I think that was a good question that person asked you. But it was a question that kind of, if that question was asked somebody else, you'd be throwing them at the deep end. Because a lot of us don't understand what our mental well-being is. A lot of us don't understand our minds. We don't understand where we are. So um, we had this conversation earlier. I know it was just a comment from you and also a comment from me. We are an extremely religious community. Mm -hmm. Very, very religious. The ethnic minority community the world over, whether in Nigeria, whether in UK, whether in America, we are known to be extremely religious. And we religialize, if I can use that word, almost everything in our lives. So um, the way we've all been brought up is that we are taught to take care of our spirit. So you go to church, you go to mosque, you go to the um, temple, wherever you go to, you go there. We're taught to take care of our bodies. We know how to do the makeup, we know how to mm -hmm. wear the right clothes. If we're getting too big, we know what to do, especially with all of these funny little products that you have out mm -hmm. there. The but how things. many of us know how to take care of our mind? Mm. That's a good question. Yes. Uh, I know we have time to have more conversation, but we'll come back to you okay. again in okay. our conversation yes. that we'll have just after this. Yeah. But thank you for coming and sharing thank your you. thoughts.